Good afternoon, I'm Herman Green with the Midday News. A special welcome to viewers watching on OneSpotMedia.com. A reminder as well that you can download our OneSpot Media app in the Google Play Store or the App Store. That's the number one, followed by the words Spot Media. The man whose administration launched the no use of fee policy is in defense mode this afternoon. Former Prime Minister Bruce Golding was addressing a Kuanis club of a Spanish town function in St. Catherine recently, where he also advocated for the disclosure of the accounts of public health facilities as a means of preventing the misuse of government funds. TVJ's Krista Campbell has the details. The no use of fee for public health facilities was a policy of a Bruce Golding led administration in 2008. And nine years later, despite sustained criticism about the practicality of the policy, the former Prime Minister is insisting it can work. And quoting from a recent Inter-American Development Bank study, he said he feels even more confident about the benefits of the policy. We said that while the service is under pressure, while the quality of service is below optimum, the removal of user fees had a positive impact in terms of increasing the general health of the population and increasing economic product productivity. He, however, conceded that the no user fee policy has put added pressure on hospital resources and that, as a result, quality service is a challenge. And he notes that many persons who turn up at public hospitals should not be there. People should go to hospitals only on two bases. One, emergency, like accident and so on, or two, on referral from the clinic. As for underserved rural areas, Mr. Golding is urging the government to offer incentives that will make healthcare professionals more willing to work in remote areas. If you were to say, for example, to those doctors that are coming out of the university, young doctors, most of whom have student loans that have to be paid off, and you were to say to them, look, if you are prepared to come and work with the government for five years under on on contract, Government will pay those installments for the five years. So you won't have that headache. Give them a 20% duty concession for their motor car. And as he suggested for public schools, the former Prime Minister wants government run medical facilities to make their accounts public. What happened to the hospital supplies? Who maintained the inventory? Who is balancing what supplies go to the hospital with what supplies are? administered and prescribed by the doctors and so on. Now, how much of it is just disappearing in thin air because some of that does go on? Krista Campbell, TVJ News. Steps have been put in place to urge residents of Paradise Norwood in Montego Bay, St. James, to use garbage skips as the parish continues to grapple with improper disposal of garbage and rodents. Western Parks and Markets, WPM Waste Management, and the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, partnered with the St. James Municipal Corporation to officially open a garbage holding area, providing five skips on Wednesday. Head of the WPM and Regional Director of NSWMA, Garnet Edmondson, says the skips are color-coded to promote coordination. Yellow color, and we are trying to get our residents to ensure that they use that skip for plastic bottles only and cans. The other in the green will put our newspapers, all sort of papers, cardboards. So we prom we are promoting separating your waste. Then the other three, our normal household waste, will be disposing those. Also be a collection schedule. The area will be monitored by two skip attendants and the police to prevent illegal dumping. Mr. Edmondson added that drivers will also have the convenience of disposing garbage without exiting their vehicle. Mayor of Montego Bay, Homer Davis, says sites like this one will be replicated across the parish, but he's asking for patience. But as I've said previously, there's a commitment from the Ministry of Local Government and the Minister to give us additional equipment before the end of this year. And the more equipment we get into Montego Bay, it's the more you will see the place being kept clean on a daily basis. And the residents have also welcomed the initiative. It used to so upsetting to me first. When I passed in, see all the garbage is just scattered all over. You know, it was so unsightly. 
and seeing this is a great change to me, which I I say I, I could be appreciate it very much. This will make a better move for the community. So I hope the resident them of Norwood community, Paradise Norwood, take this as a good initiative and dispose the garbage properly. Meanwhile, residents in, in the Norwood division in Montego Bay, St. James, now have access to better lighting. The Jamaica Public Service Company, JPS, recently installed LED street lights in surrounding communities in the Norwood division. They say LED street lights will reduce energy bills and also bolster the fight against crime. Councillor for Central Montego Bay, Joshua Cummings, gave an update on the progress of the project. So far, we have gone through practically three communities. We have gone through within the Norwood area. The Norwood Gardens areas are already completed. The Beverly Hills end and Norwood side is also completed. And the Ocean Ridge community is also completed. And they are on the Paradise Norwood side presently doing some work. Though her community was adequately lit, a resident of the division still expressed her gratitude for the initiative. Well, you know, our era, you know, the Migle Road here was good. We never find, really find no fault in the Migle Road here yet. But we're so glad for the light because the whole of now would light up. With the increase in acts of vandalism on the Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JOTC, buses, the police have decided to resume patrols of key areas. This follows a meeting yesterday involving the JOTC and the police. The latest incident of vandalism took place yesterday near King's Plaza when a stone was thrown, shattering the driver's window. In another incident recently, a female passenger was injured when a stone was thrown at a bus, a JOTC bus on Washington Boulevard. Since the start of the year, there have been more than 70 stone throwing incidents in which JOTC buses have been damaged. The incidents have costs have cost the state-run bus company more than $40 million to replace windows and windshields. Meanwhile, despite the attacks, JOTC President Paul Abraham says there should be an adequate number of buses for the start of the new school year on Monday. We are trying everything possible to get all buses ready for the school term, both that have been damaged by stone throwing and other maintenance issues too. But we will be, we will have adequate buses for the opening of school term. There's no question about that, whether they are stone damaged or not. The Ministry of Education has allocated $200 million for the rollout of the rural bus transport system. It will begin at the start of this academic year next week. The pilots will initially target students of the PATH program. Students from 91 primary and secondary schools in eight parishes will benefit from the project. Education Minister Senator Ruel Reed says PATH students significantly contribute to the absentee rate at public schools and the rural bus program will be key to addressing that problem. He says the plan is to have a fully operational national school bus system. Opposition spokesman on youth, Lisa Hanna, is encouraging young people to plan wisely when they are desiring a career. She was speaking at the Victoria Mutual Head Start Scholarship Program Awards ceremony recently. Ms. Hanna said too many persons are leaving school with hope of getting a job in their area of study without any luck. She says that the top 10 jobs today did not exist 10 years ago. For this reason, she's encouraging youths to research before choosing their career. Before you go out there and to accumulate more knowledge, particularly if you want to go into your career, find out what it is out there so that you don't go to university or college or start looking to choose your subjects in high school and you choose something that by the time you graduate will no longer exist. Ms. Hannah encouraged the awardees to go outside of their comfort zone and not be afraid of failure. Some of the most successful people in this world, including me, have failed. And you know what? It's not a bad thing because you actually learn. It's a part of the journey of life and you actually gain knowledge. Sometimes in the failing you gain more knowledge than in the euphoria or in the excitement of doing something. And so what you need to do is to help build your confidence and eliminate self-doubt when you fail 
get right back up. And Education Minister Senator Ruel Reed says the government will be providing literature books for students of the PATH program starting with grades 7, 10 and 11. He was speaking at the recent GIS think tank session. He also stated that insurance payment will be provided for students who are wards of the state as well as those on the PATH program. There's also an allocation of $2,000 for each PATH student to cover the cost of ID and uniform related items for students at the all age and junior high levels as well as their regular high school levels. We've also um, provided support through book vouchers for the neediest students, up to $2,000 per student at a cost of over $40 million. Director for Safety and Security in Schools, DSP Coleridge Minto, added that plans are being made to recruit and train 400 young persons in security operations and apprentice in an effort to improve security in selected high schools and larger primary schools. The Jamaica Combined Cadet Force will establish 12 additional units as of September 2017. 109 deans of discipline were trained in their inaugural conference during the month of July, and they will continue to support the initiatives of safety and security in our schools. We go down to news overseas as at least 21 people have been killed following the collapse of a three-story building in Mumbai, India today. 34 people have been rescued, many of whom have been hospitalized, and around another 10 are still feared trapped. We go to the CNN for more. It's very unclear right now how many people are still trapped. It's assumed there are more than a dozen, several people dead. Um, but Mumbai has had a recent building collapse, a major building collapse that was due to shoddy construction, illegal construction. There have been uh, walls that have collapsed during uh, this flooding time and other buildings that have collapsed, but it's too early to say whether or not this particular building uh, was caused by the heavy rains. It is quite possible. It's a question of illegal construction, possibly made worse by all the flooding. John? You, one, one of the other issues, I guess, which they, they're confronting right now um, in, in this region, they, they haven't really seen heavy rain like this for years. Quite often we talk about the droughts which have been afflicting areas like India and Bangladesh. Well, this, the uh, South Asia region is one of the wettest regions in the world. Generally, uh, there are annual monsoon rains, and those will continue, John, until through September. So more rain will be coming. But many analysts, climate scientists agree this is an unprecedented year. There are massive amounts of flooding going on. Uh, they're causing misery. Also in China, right now in Jiangxi province in China, they are suffering greatly from flooding. So uh, it does seem like it's a particularly dramatic year. And uh, some scientists expect that in the next few decades, rainfall will increase by as much as 20 percent. Tragic situation there. We go on to sports. The 13-year reign of Ian Andrews as administrative director of the in of the, in the Institute of Sports in Sport ended yesterday with the former journalist being fired by the 39-year-old government-run institution. Kian Reyna has the details. This is a special primetime sports investigative report. Now here's your reporter. Confirmation of Ian Andrews' sacking from in sports came Wednesday afternoon from attorney for the government-run sports agency, Wentworth Charles. Charles, in responding to a written correspondence from TVJ Sports, responded, quote, I can confirm the dismissal separation from in sport by Mr. Andrews with all entitlements, end quote. The dismissal letter, which was signed by Deputy Chairman Newton Amos, was served on Andrews and his representatives Wednesday afternoon. Efforts to contact Andrews up to sports time were unsuccessful as calls and WhatsApp messages to his cell phone went unanswered. TVJ Sports also sought a comment from Sports Minister Olivia Grange via telephone. I've not been formally advised, although I understand that his service has been terminated. I await further details, so at this time I am unable to give you any details, and of course, once we have the details, the ministry will 
issue the appropriate release. The firing of the administrative director comes six months after he was suspended on February 6 this year with pay pending investigations into allegations of misconduct. Meanwhile, General Secretary of the National Workers' Union, NWU, Granvid Valentine, told TVJ Sports he would be taking up the case of Andrews going forward as the former administrative director was not given due process by the InSports board. Over the last two years, Andrews has had several runnings with the successive InSports boards. Earlier this year, Attorney General Marlene Malahufort was consulted on the matter by the Sports Ministry under whose purview in sports falls. In the meantime, two other employees of in sports, Financial Controller Andrew Wright and the Executive Secretary Carita Davis were also dismissed by the board for abandoning their jobs. Reporting for TVJ Sports, I'm Keon Reyna. That was a special primetime sports investigative report. And that's the midday news. I'm Herman Green. Join us at 7 for the primetime news package. On behalf of the news sports and production teams, good afternoon.